Hello everyone, you are listening to episode 32 of Optimize Your Body podcast with Martin Silva. Thank you very much for tuning in. And today I'm going to be talking about gratitude and the importance of having a gratitude attitude, people. Um, I just think it's made the world of difference to my state of mind. And it really is such an important piece when it comes to happiness and living your life to the max in terms of, you know, you actually building a meaningful, purposeful life, which consists of a lot of happiness because the problem is this day and age is a lot of us expect, we're constantly expecting that we have our expectations high, we want this to happen, we want that to happen, but the bottom line is life is just a series of problems and it's how you actually deal with those problems which is going to determine your overall happiness going forward. Now, appreciation over expectation I mean, is it's the key. Now, it's really, really benefited me a lot showing gratitude and being grateful for the things I have and not spending too much energy dwelling and commiserating, if you like, on the things I haven't got. Now, don't get me wrong, on a daily basis, I get the little bitch voice in my head, which I call it, that's what I call it, the little bitch voice, which or always kind of compare me to other people, other things. And, you know, it's, I'll, I'll always daily go into a state of mind where I'll be feeling a little bit sorry for myself. But with having, having a gratitude attitude really helps me snap out of that mindset real quick because it makes me check myself. Now, a game-changing book I've been reading, which because I mean I've always um, I always I always show gratitude one way or another. I'll have a write down three. I'll have I'll have a go through three things in my head that I'm grateful for, or write them down, or sometimes ten things that I'm grateful for most days. But um, after reading this book, Fifty Nine Seconds, written by Richard Wiseman. It has completely changed the game for me because it's a lot more structured. And this guy is like a top psychologist. I mean, he is literally like a groundbreaking psychologist who's done heaps and heaps of studies on 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 the mind, on the brain. And it has been scientifically proven time and time again that the people who are grateful for what they have end up happier and are happier in general. Now, I mean, you can relate to this because I don't know if any of you have been fortunate enough to travel to places such as Asia and whatnot. From what I've gathered, the people with less things are the most happiest because they're grateful for what they have, just for actually having their family around them, people they love, food on the table, a roof over their head, clothes on their back. You know, they're very grateful and very happy individuals. And in westernized countries, we, we kind of lose track of uh, how lucky we are. And we really, we really do spend way too much time expecting things to fall at our feet and things to go our way. When let's face it, the majority of the times, well, a lot of the time, things are not going to go your way. So it's, it's actually just being appreciative. So yeah, just, just to talk about that book real quick, 59 Seconds, it's is unbelievable, folks. So what I've been doing every single day, or sorry, Monday to Friday, is just, um, for example, it says here um, in, the, in the page, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about now, um, it's a diary, basically. So from Monday to Friday, I'll keep a diary, uh, a gratitude diary. And each day is different, so you're showing gratitude in different ways, if you like. So uh, basically, to help incorporate effective Ryan techniques into your life, I have put together a rather unusual diary. Instead of keeping a record of the past, this diary encourages you to write about topics that will create, uh, will help create a happier future. The diary should be completed on five days of the week, with each entry taking just a few moments. Maintain the diary for one week. Research suggests that you will quickly notice the difference in mood and happiness, and that these changes may persist for months. If you feel the effects wearing off, Simply repeat the exercise again. Now, I've been doing this every single day, and I've got to shout out Grenade J or Jamie Alderton because he, because he is the guy who actually brought this book to light. And, uh, you know, basically, I just wanted to say real quick, there's only, there's only, there's very few people within the fitness industry that actually inspire me, motivate me, and, uh, you know, really keep me in check in terms of, you know, pushing forward and making progress and, 
giving and helping others really because that is the purpose of this podcast and if you like i know i might sound a bit you know a bit hippie-ish or woo-woo but i've discovered over the last year or two that actually my purpose in life is to is to help people and it sounds it sounds cheesy but you'll you'll find that actually giving and again, showing gratitude is what is going to determine your overall happiness. You know, you can accumulate and accomplish whatever you want, but the bottom line is, at the end of the li- at the end of the line, when all is said and done, and your time, your number is up, as grim as that sounds, you're just going to be remembered for the relationships you had with people and the kind of person you were and what you did for people in terms of. You know, not necessarily materialistic things. And that's not what it's about, by the way. This book does actually say, you know, you can do numerous uh, things for people um, which are not which are not financial. You know, you, you can just, even just something as simple as smiling at someone, um, you know, buying someone a car. Okay, that's money involved. Anyway, I don't want to go through too many examples, but you see what I mean? It's, it's that, that's, that's for me, I, I mean, I, I just get a lot of, a lot of pleasure and um, it gives me a lot of purpose in life trying to give and help people achieve, you know, health, happiness, whatever that may be. But anyway, yeah, so for example, on a Monday in my diary, you'll just uh, write down three things that you're grateful for. So it could be anything that um, has happened, you know, like anything in your life which you're grateful for. You can write down anything. That could be like the job you have, um, having a lovely cup of coffee, um, you know, the, the, the dog you welcome home. I'm just reading this out of the book now. Um, Tuesday, for example, terrific times. You recite something amazing which happened to you uh, in the past. So you just, you just write, you write this down, by the way, folks. It's very, very powerful. Um, again, lots of studies in here show that writing things down uh, is actually the, the way forward when it comes to, you know, jotting down your thoughts and stuff like that. And, uh, and, and just overall happiness, writing down your thoughts and uh, your gratitude is really important. So on Tuesday, for example, you just write down, you know, like an experience, a, a pleasant experience, which um, you, were, you were happy about, really, uh, something that made you extremely you know, extremely happy. For example, um, the first one I did was when my mum, my mum came out to my mama. When my mum came out to Australia to uh, visit me, we went on. A, we were fortunate enough to go on a helicopter ride over the uh, the Sydney Opera House and over the the Harbour Bridge on a lovely summer's day. And uh, it was just an amazing moment. It, it was about 30 minutes on a helicopter, and just to see the smile on her face and the taking in the scenery and. I was just really making an effort to be as present as possible and enjoy the moment. And writing that down, I swear, folks, you do get a, a release of dopamine, endorphins, whatever that is. Um, but you literally sometimes get shivers up your spines because you, the, the, the brain doesn't can't tell the difference. Bear that in mind, folks. If you do anything, if you perform anything in your mind with enough emotional intensity, right... The brain does not know the difference between an actual event or an experience or something that's going to take place, which is why people visualize, why visualization uh, is, so fun, is so important, really, visualizing something in the future, for example, if you want to be successful or you want to achieve something, actually taking some time to visualize that happening, um, it becomes a vivid experience in your mind, and guess what? The brain actually believes it's taken place when... It may not have actually happened yet, you know, so it's very, the brain is very, very powerful. So, um, when I'm writing these things down, I'm literally reliving the moments. Um, and I just can't express to you folks how important it is because, um, I know I keep mentioning the word epidemic, but folks, we're living in an epidemic of, um, mental illness, of obesity. We're the sickest we've ever been on a, on a global scale, as I keep saying, not just physically, but mentally as well. I think, you know, I'm trying to raise awareness for um, guys, uh, for men's mental health, because I, um, I have actually experienced in my past depression in my early 20s. I'm now 30 years old. I won't go too much into that, but um, it wasn't it wasn't serious. But it was it was a, a mild case of depression. I went through that for a solid year or two. I was on the verge of taking antidepressants, but uh, luckily I, I fought through it and I managed to uh, to, to do it through um, CBT, so cognitive behavioural therapy. I went and saw a counsellor and stuff like that, and I, I managed to uh, to pull through that. Luckily, but there's a lot of guys and people in general who are who are facing these hard times. And uh, don't get me wrong, some of the times it may be 
you know, like a, a chemical imbalance in the brain where, you know, sometimes people do need... Um, it, it's, it's a rare occasion where I think all other avenues need to be exhausted first before you take antidepressants. But, um, you know, a lot of people, it does help, and they do need that to get through. Um, but a lot of the time, you can actually help yourself, folks, by training your mind. Y- your mind is no different to your body. You know, if, you, if you're training your body, like I take a lot of time out, and I always have done, taken a lot of time out to to train my body and look after my body and and uh, keep my my physical condition you know on point but the brain is no different you know i'm training my muscles in the gym you need to train your brain it's been proven that you know tools such as gratitude meditation actually increases certain types of gray matter in the brain which uh, will increase the amount of serotonin that your brain produces and reduce you know, the stress hormones such as cortisol. So um, practice makes perfect. You know, nothing happens overnight, but I've, I've only really been making a conscious effort now to write down, to, to do this diary day in, day out. And the book is called 59 Seconds for a reason because it doesn't take you longer than a minute or two really to actually to write these things down Monday to Friday. And um, it's, just, it's just been so transformative for me um, over the last year since I've started paying attention to these things and just appreciating what I have. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a constant battle for me because, like, you know, every day I'm, I'm doing a lot. You know, I've, I train about 30 clients a, week, clients a week as a personal trainer, so I'll start work at 5, 6 a.m. I'll, I'll do, like, say, five or six clients in a row, for example, and then I'm straight on my laptop then um, creating ebooks and, and trying to build them um, in the process of building a website now to provide training programs and whatnot for people and, uh, you know, nutritional content and, and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, I'm spending a lot of time working and, and, and putting myself, you know, it's not, I haven't got a boss breathing down my neck, but I'm putting myself under this stress, you know, being uncomfortable for me. I'm, I'm kind of getting comfortable being uncomfortable, but it does get stressful and you feel sorry for yourself at times, you know, you're like, oh God, why am I doing this? Blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you feel tired a lot of the time and just, it's just, it, it really does keep you in check because the second I go into that negative mindset, I'll snap out of it. I'll find something I appreciate. It could be anything. You know, like for example, the other day I was sat there complaining in my head and I thought, do you know what? I'm, I can actually see. You know, some people are, unfortunately, some people are blind. They can't, they haven't got eyesight, folks. Um, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking around, you know, and I can actually um, take in things around me. I'm actually lucky enough to be able to live with all of my senses. You know, I know it sounds a bit far out there, but, uh, you know, that's what it is. But yeah, talking about, talking about life, you know, um, this is quite a deep episode, folks, but, um, I think it's needed every now and then because, uh, as I say, we need to help ourselves because, um, you know, our mind is is very fragile. And, uh, you know, what you actually, if you're listening to this podcast now, first of all, thank you. (laughs) But if you're listening to this podcast now, you choose to do this. And whatever you choose to take in, folks, bear in mind we live in a world where there's more information available to us than ever before. And the information you choose to take in is actually going to completely mold and shape your brain and actually what you say, how you act, how you feel. You know, we, we don't, we, we seem to take it for granted that we're just, you know, we're, we're going from one pleasure to the next. And, you know, a lot of us are, are sucked into short term gratification. You know, we, uh, there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with, um, enjoying yourself. And, uh, you know, we, we all like to enjoy ourselves, but, you know, delay gratification is sometimes, well, it is actually the answer, but we get sucked into these short term pleasures you know from um from day to day and uh, we just lose tr- we, we just kind of um we we don't we don't actually think about how fragile the brain is and how important it is to absorb the right information because you know the, the majority of people i hate to say it but the majority of people are just they just want to be entertained there's nothing wrong with being entertained i like being entertained but without being kind of patronizing or condescending you know for example most people that go on social media, scroll through other people's lives, watch these little videos and, you know, entertaining videos. There's nothing wrong with that. But bear in mind, the algorithm is very is very advanced on Facebook, right? So if you start watching funny videos, which in reality are not benefiting you, they're really not. Okay, yeah, it's fun to have a little giggle. And, but really, is it, is it, you know, and talking about fulfillment long term, you know, you need, to, you need to learn a little bit about certain things. So if you're just constantly trying to be entertained by these like short videos of, you know, someone, I don't know, 
I can't think of any examples right now. <laughs> I had some spring to mind then, but it would be inappropriate. So, uh, um, you know, we, we just want to be entertained. And there's so much information out there for us to actually, valuable information for us to consume, uh, which are actually really going to benefit the quality of our lives. Uh, yet we get sucked in, including myself. I get sucked in all the time, scrolling through people's lives on Instagram and watching people's stories and whatnot. Um, I try to watch people that inspire me, but... Um, you know, I sometimes get sucked into just scrolling and whatnot. And uh, it's just, let's face it, guys, it, it holds no value and it's um, precious energy. So don't get me wrong, entertain yourself, but just be mindful of the information you're consuming because uh, it is going to determine your, uh, eventually, your overall happiness. Obviously, lots of other factors come into it, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's important. By the way, folks, um, doing a podcast on your own, it's actually very challenging. For example, now, I always feel like I'm waffling on, and I probably am, you know, but um, anyways, I was just saying earlier about um, people who inspire me, and uh, there's two people that spring to mind in the fitness industry, and that's Jamie Alderson, um, also known as at Grenade J on Instagram. He's the one that brought this book to light for me, 59 Seconds by Richard Wiseman. I highly recommend this book, folks. I highly recommend it. The studies in there have actually blown my mind. There's, there's not just about gratitude and you know all this kind of stuff. It's all really interesting studies about creativity, um, all different things in terms of motivation and you know how a lot of us, like for example, with me, one of my main flaws is procrastination. Now, studies have shown that at least 25% of us procrastinate. In case you don't know what that is, it's actually wasting time. So it's avoiding the important things which you, uh, need to be done, which are not necessarily enjoyable, like daily chores, whatever that may be. I tend to avoid, sub subconsciously, I will avoid these things and I'll waste time doing other things which give me a little kick of dopamine, such as going onto Instagram and watching people's stories and checking how many likes I've had on the picture. You know what I mean? I'm a human being. I get sucked into that on a daily basis. And that's one of my flaws. And the book actually does, um, it, it shows you lots of different studies and teaches you different methods and tricks in terms of improving your um, appreciation, your creativity, your productivity. Guys, it's really, really fascinating. Um, but yeah, other people who inspire me, uh, Sal Di Stefano from Mind Pump Media. The first ever podcast I listened to was Mind Pump Media. And I've been very fortunate to have these two guys feature on my podcast. So I think I'll just tell you which ones they were now. I think it was number number um, 12, it might have been, with Grenade J, and episode number 13 with um, Sal Di Stefano. So I would highly recommend tuning into these episodes, folks, um, on my podcast, episode 12 with Grenade J and episode 13 with Sal Di Stefano. They were amazing podcasts and you'll get lots of takeaways from them but those two guys really 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 inspire me why do they inspire me because they firstly i uh, what i really motivates me is work ethic so i have a high work ethic but nothing like these guys they blow me out of the water um and when it comes to success it's it's really not about just working hard it's about being very strategic and smart working smart you know and these guys definitely um, definitely kind of exemplify that. They really, really do work very clever, but the, the, above all, they are adding value to the world. They are giving, they're putting out so much amazing content when it comes to fitness, health, nutrition, um, you know, all these different things. So, and they both have their own podcasts. They both, the first two podcasts I ever listened to. So guys, as I was saying about what you absorb and what you listen to and what you learn will completely determine how you feel, how you think, and how you act on a daily basis. So, um, Jamie Alderton, or Quinn AJ, uh, his podcast is called Mindset with Muscle. He also has his own awesome book, which I haven't read yet, also called Mindset with Muscle. Saudi Stefano, Mind Pump Media, is a dope podcast, so tune into them too. But um, yeah, they, they massively inspire me then, and there's, there's a few others, but I just wanted to put that one out there. But once again, I'm going off on a tangent, and as I was saying earlier, um, life is just a series of problems, folks. As grim as that sounds, 
just just literally you just take just bear this in mind right i've really started um really really am more present now because you need to appreciate the simple things in life folks you need to really sit there and be present as much as possible because we are literally living in a world of distractions where we are constantly being sucked in to our smartphones our computers and whatnot you know especially the phone come on we all know how much time was spent hunched over sucked in to that computer which is literally dictating our lives folks it literally is so appreciating the small things and just realizing that you know what life is not all sunshine and rainbows as rocky says it's really not it is a series of problems and it's how you deal with these trials and tribulations that actually determines your overall wellness now for for example Jamie Alderton put on his Instagram the other day a very good quote life is 90 uh, sorry 10% what happens happens to us and 90% how we deal with it I'll say that again life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we deal with it right now if you just bear that in mind life is a series of problems okay now you need to read the top selling book it's number one in the world right now folks you may have already read it the subtle art of not giving a fuck what a title for a book mark manson is the author's name the subtle art of not giving a fuck how about that folks the second i honestly that book was a bit of a game changer for me as well to be honest i already don't give a fuck about what people think to be honest but um occasionally i do slip into thinking about what people analyze what people think but i snap out of it straight away folks the second you can stop giving a flying fuck about what people think about you is the second you will start developing true a true meaningful life and as he states in there life is a series of problems you know it's how you deal with those problems and uh, your attitude towards uh, moving forward and and living in the moment and just not overwhelming yourself with um, all of these things you know like sweating the small stuff that's another that's another good book folks sorry i'm going off on one today i'm, I'm who do i think i am today bloody albert einstein pumping out all these books and information um let's face it you just want to be in shape you probably don't even give a shit about all this <laughs> nah but um yeah there's an um uh, what was i saying then yeah uh, sweating the small stuff we always we always sweat about the minor things none of this shit Guys, 99% of this stuff, even though you think it matters, you think, shit, this is really important, and you release all these stress hormones, right? And you really worry about these things. Guys and girls, check that, check that book out. It's a really easy read. It's like two pages per chapter. Uh, don't sweat the small stuff. And a really good takeaway from that book for me was, a year from now, will you be worrying about it, right? So do you know sometimes we have these, what we perceive to be, you know, big worries and a massive stress and burden, right? Just think in your head, right? This is really, really, it's been groundbreaking for me. When I think of this now, a year from now, are you even fucking going to remember this? Are you going to, what kind of foul mouth today? Sorry, mum. You wash my mouth out with soap when I go back home in October. Bloody hell. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, um, yeah, you, you really going to give a shit about that thought a year down the line? And at 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to give a flying fuck about what you just thought about, what has just stressed the shit out of you, right? Um, you're not going to, you're not going to remember a year from now. And do you know what? 100% of the time, since I read that book three years ago, when I've had a worry or a stress and I've got really, really worked up about it, I thought, a year from now, am I going to worry about this? No, I'm not. And do you know what? My stress levels go back down to pretty much zero straight away. So that's a good takeaway. Um, once again, I went off on one then. Bloody hell. Anyways, folks, I could bloody talk for... Uh, I could talk for Britain. You know what? I've just decided what I need to start doing is making more notes for these podcasts because I'm trying to freestyle and I'm just going off. I'm just shunting from pillar to post. I don't know what's going on here, folks. Hope you got some takeaways from that anyway. So if I just summarize that for you, right? Be grateful, folks. Be grateful because that's literally the here and now is all we have. What's happened in the past? Do you know what? You can't change. If you made mistakes in the past, you can't change it. Learn from it. Move forward. If you're going to get anxious about something you think is going to happen in the future, guess what? Once again, you can't change it. You can't, you can't do anything about that. What you can do is plan. If you have something which is a big event or something that you need to be on point for, yes, plan like shit. Be on form. Get your shit together and make sure you've done everything you can and left no turns, uh, stones unturned. But don't think about, do not think about, try not to, as soon as you start thinking about, you know, oh, this could happen, that could happen, this, 
snap out of it folks because you really can't change it but what you because you, as this book says um, oh sorry there's another book I'm listening to um, anyway this other thing I'm listening to now we have creative mechanisms built into us right so when you have these moments where they could be quite stressful you have something let me just say um, speak it in public okay this is something that I've gotten to recently doing seminars and whatnot. it's very daunting uh, and I find it very hard <clears throat> But you know what? I find it hard to build up to it. Once I've, once I'm going, I'm into my flow state. I bloody love it. I relish it. There's a lot of work to be done in terms of um, communication and actually developing my skills. But oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, that's it. We have these mechanisms built into us where we will have. We, uh, basically, your body will just create on the spot, right? So it'll, based on past experiences, you'll be absolutely fine in these situations 99.9% of the time, right? And if something does go wrong, so what? You did, you, you did it give you your best shot, okay? Now, once again, right, I'm just going to wrap this up. Jesus, Martin, make some more notes next time. Okay, to summarize, right? Get the book, 59 seconds, folks. Get the book. If you don't like reading, right, okay, get the book, right? Just get the book. 59 seconds, read it. Game changer. Another book, Sal Art of Not Giving a Fuck, okay? Two podcasts that have, like, I would not be here now talking about this, and I would not have 90% of the information I have in my, stored in my brain now if it wasn't for Mind Pump Media, primarily, and, uh, and Grenade J. So tune into their podcast, Mind Pump Media and Mindset with Muscle. Honestly, folks, um, if you don't like it, I'll be, I'll be blown away. Um, they're, they're great. So they're the three takeaways from this. 59 seconds the book. Mind Pump Media Podcast and Mindset with Muscle, okay? I'm super grateful for those things. But just remember, appreciation over expectations. We're always naturally going to expect things to happen, good, great things. But most of the time, we're presented with a problem and we have to deal with our fucking problem. Okay, folks? So appreciate the here and now. Start being grateful. Start, start doing a gratitude journal. Read that book and I'm sure it's going to inspire you to do that. And guys and girls, I'm really excited because the next podcast, or potentially the one after that, I'm going to be interviewing... Uh, live on Instagram they're known as at live org L-I-V-O-R-G the guy's name is Sam Webb and he is um, raising awareness for men's mental health you know depression and stuff like that he's someone very close to him uh, took, took their lives unfortunately and I'm going to be interviewing this guy next week. So that's going to be an awesome episode, folks. And talking about gratitude and, uh, and if anyone out there knows someone or is struggling with uh, depression or mental health ailments, check out my podcast with my, uh, one of my close friends back home who has his own mental health awareness group called Bro Protectors. Okay, uh, what's the podcast episode? I'm just going to find out for you now. But yeah, I've done an episode with him. Um, right at the start of my of my podcast journey, uh, you should go and check that out. I th- believe it is. Oh, it's one of the early episodes, folks. Anyway, I think it's episode eight. Um, Aaron Correa from Protectors. Go and check that uh, episode out. Really, really good. Um, and that's it. In a nutshell, folks. If you can give me a five star, okay, I'm not going to say that. If you liked this podcast or my previous ones, can you please give me a rating and review on iTunes, folks? I, I, honestly, if you can do that for me, it's going to be a massive, massive help because it's very competitive now in terms of getting my, um, in terms of actually reaching people and people actually tune into this podcast as a battle because it's so competitive and the ratings and reviews mean everything in terms of me making progress and getting my message out there. So if you can do that for me, folks, be a massive help. Check me out on Instagram at Martin Silver Fitness. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much for tuning in. Have a cracking day or have a cracking evening.